Hey guys, Sarkat here, and much like with Best Ray League, I've prepared a pros, cons, and some future worries um, for the league itself. I am feeling incredibly positive about this league, however. Um, I think the league looks really awesome, and the only real cons I have um, aren't so much about the league itself, but more so with the stuff coming with the leagues and the new skill reworks, etc. So let's kind of go through it. So for anyone who doesn't know how Incursion works... Um, TLDR, in every single zone, you will meet Alva, and she will open this special portal, you go back in time, and you go back in time to people building a pyramid, you kill the people building the pyramid, and because of that you change how the pyramid is made in the future. So yeah, you basically go back and retcon pyramid building. Once you've done this roughly a dozen or so times, um, you then send, she sends you to the actual temple itself, you go in and you get all the spicy rewards. So basically it's every single zone you encounter, they've said every single zone, go back, change how the stuff works in the past, then you go in and every 12 or so you get this big loot explosion, really big density, it does get affected by map mods, so if you're in a map, uh, the map mods will tra travel across. Looks really cool, looks very interesting, and the art style is this very like ass. Aztec and Conquistador style thing and I really really like the visuals. I think the visuals, I think the whole art style, I think it looks really cool and yeah you sort of go back and you can see you have like a little timer and you have a bar which fills up so when you're in like the Terminator mode going backwards you have like a timer and a monsters killed bar and then that's like how long you stay in the past for. So you've got like a You've got a little bit of time, you go back, you kill monsters, this gives you more th stuff, and as long as you kill enough monsters, you can kill the architects in the past. All cool, right? Right. Might sound a bit confusing, but once you actually get into it, it'll be pretty straightforward. Um, when you get sent backwards in time, you'll be sent into random rooms. So even though you can kind of choose how the pyramid gets built, um, based on who you do and don't kill, so this is a pretty good example, so like, you enter it, um, and then depending on what sort of rooms you go into and what you unlock and don't unlock, what the end run will be like. Um, because you get put into random rooms, each run should hopefully feel quite different. Um, there's going to be like 70 different rooms or something, loads of different bosses. So it should hopefully be not too cookie cutter. And each run should hopefully feel slightly different. It reminds me a little bit of like dungeon runs. If anyone's ever really done, you know, Hearthstone stuff. But basically it's like a mini like roguelike kind of thing. It seems kind of cool. Um, you have bosses, you go through, and different rooms have different rewards. So, you know, for example, the Office of Cartography, um, that has loads of maps as the reward. So you'll want to work out exactly what it is that you want. And we've also been shown some special items, which have their own special mods on them. Um, and I'm guessing... Where is it? I'm showing like a... Uh, here. So this, for example, this was a astral plate with this very powerful hybrid flat and percent life. So I would assume this would maybe drop from the Sanctum of Vitality. That would kind of make sense. So we have certain warband style mods dropping from particular things, but we don't really know. right? So the core concept I am really, really into. And because you encounter Alva every zone, this should hopefully feel like a very present league. So we'll always be encountering the new waifu every zone. There is RNG based on like where you get placed, but hopefully it should feel active. It should feel, boom, it should feel like a really cool thing. Now, it obviously has a pretty powerful reward structure as well, since there's pretty good density. It takes the map mods with it. So you have a super juiced up map, you'll have a super juiced up pyramid. So you'll get good rewards in terms of XP, in terms of loot drops, and from like loot explosions um, when it comes to the end thing. Now this is uh, both a pro and a con, but I'll get to that later. Clear speed meta, because you have this kind of like timed aspect of when you first go backwards. Clear speed meta, again, it's a good and a bad thing based on how you feel about the game as a player. I'll talk more about that later. But, you know, generally that is a good thing. Um... Lots of new skills and reworks. Having loads of reworks is always nice. A lot of the reworks look a bit meh, in my opinion. That's something I'll also get into later. But it's I'm very glad that it is happening. 
Um, and this idea of player choice, it gives player agency. It means that, you know, you feel like you're having some kind of choice in what you're doing. So much of, like, Atlas of the Worlds and whatever is kind of, you know, you want to set up an Elder Ring, but you can't constantly get screwed over by RNG. Hopefully, the room RNG doesn't feel as bad as the Elder system. So it's kind of like there's some RNG, but you're still choosing how you do the setup. Um, and that will just... It will depend how rare the rooms really feel. Um, but yeah, having choice is always good. It makes things feel a bit more fresh and it lets people develop strategies over the long term. And that will help lead to, you know, player retention because it's like you've got things to learn. People like to min-max that sort of stuff. So that's pretty cool. And one of the final things is probably the best thing about this league, in my opinion, is it gives you access to past leagues and past rewards through the different rooms having different structures, right? So, for example, let's say you want to have, like, Harvey Orbs reintroduced. You just have a room which drops, you know, old currencies. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about Bestuary um, was the way that you got access to past things. And since Bestuary isn't going core anymore, it would be nice to have access to past the leagues. So, you know, this is a good way of, you know, nitpicking, like, oh, we really like Talismans as an item. We don't like the Talisman system. Well, we'll have a special room which drops a bunch of Talismans, right? Seems good. So that, you know, hopefully they really lean into that idea, you know, having one which gives relics of the past, all of this cool stuff, hopefully. Um, and it means there's lots of room for this to be expanded upon as well. So you can constantly just like add in new rooms as you're developing. So in that sense, um, it has near limitless potential. You know, it's a very easy system to expand on and meaning this could go core potentially. Um, so that's, you know, all pretty good. Like, these are all good. Um, right, now let's get into cons. And again, the league itself looks amazing. Like, I'm really feeling this league. Uh, most of these cons are to do with what comes alongside the league. So, the whole clear speed meta thing. So, um, Bestuary and a lot of the core gut reaction to Bestuary, ignoring, like, the terrible state it launched in. We know it launched terribly. A lot of people's bad reaction was like, it feels slower, it doesn't feel rewarding enough, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of that we spoke about this a lot on Bay Class was because, you know, we've had Besh, uh, sorry, we've had uh, Breach, we've had Harvey, we've had Legacy, we've had Abyss. We've had all of these leagues which just throw loot at us. And then we had one league which we had to like work to get the loot. And then people were like, where are my alchemy orbs? Like, why can't I sustain? Why is this this? Why is this that? Um, and this is quite clear that, you know, a big part of this league, even though Chris said they were developing this league beforehand, I mean, come on, guys. It's quite clear that a lot of this is like, hey, you know, this is the apology for Bestuary. Um, now, while I do think it's good that if the players want clear speed, you let them have it, you don't want to, like, over-push that idea because it's about the long-term um, health thing. So the problem with constantly pushing rewards and rewards and rewards is you need to keep outdoing yourself constantly um, and anything which feel, falls short was like, well, this wasn't as good as Breach or this wasn't as good as Incursion. Um, and then, you know, you run into potential long-term player retention problems, progression comes too quick, so on and so forth. One of the best examples I had from a Twitch chat was someone just saying, read any basic literature on over-spoiling your kids. If you just give rewards constantly and too frequently, then, yeah, it's just not good for the long-term health. So... Uh, but, you know, this is kind of up to GGG where they want their game to go long term. You know, we don't know. You can also counteract over reward by making monsters more dangerous. If they make monsters more dangerous, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Um, from lots of the footage we've seen, um, there's lots of ledges, lots of doorways. And lots of ledges, lots of doorways is great, but also bad in the fact that it straight up just kills some builds. Um, some builds just work very poorly in certain layouts. Um, now, that's fine, right? Because normally, if your build is bad in a certain layout, then you just don't run that layout, right? Whereas, you're kind of scuffed. You, because this is the only thing like, that you just have these pyramids. You can't be like, oh, I just won't run the pyramid layout. Like, no, you're locked into the pyramid layout. Um, so that might be kind of bad. 
Um, and also having lots of doorways and lots of, lots of ledges. Skills like Lightning Strike, for example, they can't travel up or down ledges. So, you know, you do a big Val Lightning Strike rework, but then hang on, my Lightning Strike doesn't travel up. Um, and also one of the new traps, the Fire Cross Spinny Trap. Uh, I might be wrong in this, but it looks like that doesn't go up or down ledges either. And that has, you know, limited charges and a very long cooldown. So it's like, well, then that's terrible. Um, lots of skills are just very bad with doorways, and unless they have, you know, lots of different um, architecture and layouts. Yeah, here, for example, you see it, it doesn't actually go up the ledge. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So when you have a skill with an eight second cooldown, obviously this will be changed, you know, be lower with cooldown recovery and stuff, and three charges. For it to not travel up and down ledges, when a lot of these Val Ruin style outs is full of ledges, is actually pretty monk s if you're trying to build around it. And this kind of goes into my next point. Um, so, you know, we have a bunch of, you know, really cool new skills, but a lot of these skills just don't really work with all these ledges and doorways and stuff. And a lot of the new skills, which look really promising on paper, just have no AoE. Um, I think in one of these previous clips, we saw some explosive trap, and I can show you the tool tip for explosive trap. Here, Explosive Trap, when I first read it, looked awesome. It looked so cool. So it's a trap spell AoE Fire. It does physical damage and with Fizz to Fire conversion. Okay, this is really interesting. And it's kind of like KB. It does lots of small explosions. You're like, oh, this seems this seems really awesome. Um, but then it has like no AoE whatsoever. Um, let's see if I can try and find the clip for you. And yeah, there are clips in here where he uses uh, multiple explosive traps and can't even clear a whole pack. Uh, here we go, right? This is this is him using it here. And this is with cluster trap. And he's struggling to like, hit whole packs. And it's like, we, we've had this, guys. We, we've had... We've had this problem with traps currently. Like, traps are currently quite playable. Um, but AoE is a really limiting factor. And if you have to throw a trap three, four, five times, yes, you might have removed the cooldown, but if you have to throw them so many times, then you're just screwed. Um, so yeah, they need to do something to the AoE scaling. Um, and if you say, but Taki, you know, maybe the guy's video has no AoE scaling. Don't let people do promo videos of no skills with no scaling. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like a lot of these new traps seem really cool And then the traps which don't seem very cool in my opinion seem like really iffy um, So we have a bunch of traps uh, like siphoning trap for example, which are utility based um, Now siphoning trap you throw the trap it like connects a bunch of beams up to all the men enemies Then one beam to you and it gives you life and mana regen for each enemy that it affects Um now it has no charges, meaning it's a one-time use, and it has a cooldown of four seconds. So you're not realistically going to be using it for clear, you're just going to use it for like strong boxes, breaches, bosses. Now, if you're playing a saboteur, a saboteur gets easy 20% regen, meaning you don't need this. Um, and these, a lot of these traps have duration tags, and because they have duration traps, it means you want to be playing sab or not playing sab. What do I mean by that? So the way that trap triggering works is really awkward. The way that you trigger traps is you throw a trap, a mob walks onto it, it procs, okay? If you use cluster trap, if you use multi-trap, you throw like five traps, and then you either use a sunblast belt, which reduces your trap duration, with hair blast jewels, so you have zero trap duration, meaning they instantly explode, or you use um, chain reaction from the saboteur ascendancy. Now the saboteur ascendancy gives it that when your traps trigger, your other traps trigger, okay? Siphoning trap is useless with that because you already have enough regen. You don't need this. Um, so if you're playing a sab, you have all the cooldown reduction. You have the stuff triggering. So the duration doesn't really matter. But then in the same breath, they've removed the cooldown um, and completely removed charges from a bunch of uh, traps. I Meaning you could play like, for example, Elementalist Trappers or Inquisitor or Deadeye or whatever, right? Now, with those guys, if you want to use some of these utility, like Seismic Trap, for example, or Siphon Trap, if you want to use some of these utility traps, you want your trap to trigger instantly. So what that means is you'll be going the Sunblast route. You're like, okay, why does this matter? 
all of these skills scale with duration. So all of these skills benefit from you stacking a bunch of increased duration on them. If you stack a bunch of increased duration, it ruins how your Sunblast belt works. So that's really weird. It's, it's just, yeah, it's just really odd to make traps with duration, but then not rework how traps trigger. Um, or maybe rework the Sunblast belt. So if you're wearing the Sunblast belt, your traps always instantly trigger. That can maybe mean a nice option. So if you want to play Sab, you play Sab, you don't need to worry about it at all. And if you want to play a non-Sab trapper, then you use the Sunblast belt, right? So yeah, a lot of these new traps, they have very awkward looking AOE. They have kind of awkward looking scaling through duration. They have awkward cooldowns, but also there's kind of like too many of them. Um, so a lot of these traps have been built with like synergies quite clearly inside it. So for example, a uh, seismic trap is a physical skill, um, which you throw and that's like your big duration. I'm throwing this for single target, right? So this has very obvious synergy with explosive trap, which also has physical damage. So the idea is, as they show in this clip here, you have your seismic trap and you have your explosive trap. Um, now bear trap is being reworked. So when you bear trap a boss, the boss takes bonus damage. So what they want you to do in an ideal world is you see the boss, you throw your seismic trap, you throw your bear trap, you throw your siphoning trap for the heal, and then you throw your single target trap. Meaning you're using how many traps now? So you're using one clear trap, one utility trap, siphon trap, one boss utility with an eight second charge. Um, sorry, the one bear boss utility is bear trap, and then the eight second duration. So you're looking at like maybe four traps to just play a build. Meanwhile, what people currently do, we currently play trappers, is they play either lightning or fire trap for clear, and they just use cremation trap for single target. And I think cremation trap single target is going to be better than like half of this shit. You know, like you've made all of these really cool, funky traps. So this is like, you could just use cremation trap and it'll be better. So I don't know. It's interesting. I think it's really cool and I'm really excited. But a lot of these seem a bit iffy. A lot of them seem a bit iffy. Um, yeah. Um, and then there comes to the skill reworks. So I I want to talk about Incinerate. Um, Incinerate looks awful. I know Ziggy has a video of Incinerate as well. But even in Ziggy's video, the Incinerate range looks terrible. And I actually prepared a fun little clip um, for you to enjoy. So this is, was my first reaction to people talking about Incinerate. Now, before I show this clip, I just say I feel like having both Incinerate and Flame Blast is kind of redundant. Um, but yeah, so this is my opinion on Incinerate. You're wasting your time. Because this is, okay, this is 3.3, .3, right? This is 3.3, .3, right? So all of you dipshit motherfuckers, right? Who are like, oh, let's play some Incinerate. While you do that, yeah? I'll just play Fireball with inbuilt Vile Fireball. And I'll press one button and I'll kill everything. Meanwhile, you'll do this. Wave, kill two mobs. Wave, kill two mobs. Wave, killed one mob. Rare mob. Wave, it's still alive. Wait, it's still fucking there. Meanwhile, Fireball, mate, it's just like Fireball a couple of times. Just use Impulsor. Yeah, like... The AoE just doesn't look good enough, sadly. So, yeah, those are kind of like my cons. So, as you can see, while I do have, you know, some criticism and stuff, um, my criticism isn't of the league itself. I think the new league looks awesome. I think it looks really, really cool. It's mostly just to do with, you know, um, some of these things. And again, a lot of, like, the Vile skills that they've shown off, a lot of the Vile skills kind of only really look good for, uh, bossing and breaching. Uh, Rain of Arrows, I think, actually looks really cool. I think Rain of Arrows, uh, Grimra was saying the same thing as well, um, could potentially become, like, the new go-to, like, budget bow option. Um, but yeah, so like Val Double Strike, um, Val Lightning like, Strike, they only really kind of look decent for bossing. They look kind of terrible for Claire. 
Um, so mm, it's it's a bit awkward, but hopefully, hopefully, it's just a case of all the showcases we've been shown are uh, just bad showcases, and hopefully, in practice, they feel a lot smoother. Um, some of the you know Val skills look really cool. The Val Blight looks amazing, and again, just because I think one or two things look a little bit disappointing, doesn't mean that you know you need to like oh Dead League, it's terrible. It's like no, it just means like one or two things looks a bit disappointing, and they've got like a full month, right? So, you know, if we if we do any, like, big criticism now, then maybe they might watch it and be like, yeah, you know, maybe, you know, that guy was right. We've got a month to tweak the numbers a little bit, give it a little bit of oomph. Um, so, for example, Vile Double Strike, I feel like the speed could be doubled again on the mobs. Um, they look too slow for clear. Um, so just give them more movement speed. If you don't want to buff their attack speed, because it'll be too OP for bosses, just give them more movement speed. They just, they need more oomph. They just need more speed to them. In this clip, you can see he's often killing the pack before the, the guy even gets there. So it's just like, just give it more clear. Um, again, it could just be that they're showing us terrible clips, but then give us better clips to work with, you know? But yes. Um, and yeah. TLDR, I think the league looks amazing. Some of the skills look a bit meh. I'm a little bit worried about the long-term health of the game, and I really don't want GGG after the failure, even though I really liked it, the failure of Beastuary, um, to be like, oh, we can't ever do a slow league. We can only push out density, density, density. Like, eh. I really liked Beastuary. I still think that certain elements of Beastuary could be taken into the core game, and I really hope, I'm just going to throw it out there, we see the aspect skills return in some way. Because I was a big fan of the aspect skills. Hopefully they could maybe come in through incursion with, you know, the aspect room. Ooh, fancy. But yes, anyway, I am Taki. And that was my very long praising incursion, hating everything else video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.